Now, Pergamum had evil influences. So this was a church that was surrounded by evil people. But they also had evil influences in the very church. <laughs> This is Motivations and Memoirs and I am Ivorica and you are viewing lesson 5 in the studies I call them the Revelation series. So if this is your first time viewing I encourage you to see the link because you would have missed lesson 1, 2, 3 and 4. Today the study will take us into another church as I continue to examine the seven churches in the province of Asia. So today's lesson I am going to be looking on number three church and that is the church in Pergamon. The reading comes from Revelation 2, verse 12 to 17. And I am reading from the NIV. To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city, where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin, so that they ate food sacrificed to idols and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore. Otherwise, I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Whosoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it and that is the word of god thanks be to god so father we just bless you to, today we just honor and exalt you we thank you for your lordship we thank you for this opportunity that we have that we can go in your word lord we ask that you will cause your word to grow in us like a seed grounded and firm mighty god like a tree father god even as i give myself to you to be used of you i pray god that you will hide me behind the cross you will inspire me lord god so that i will lead oh god this teaching in the way that only you would want it to go father bless the, the viewers i pray that you will minister to them and you will cause that this teaching will bring strength will Oh God, bring confirmations to those who are asking questions. And mighty God, will, will cause us, Lord God, that we will continue to remain grounded and firm in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so I will start with a little history on this church in Pergamum. It must be noted that this church had even surroundings. As such, it was called the heretical church, where they were steadfast, as the word of God says earlier, in their faith, but they were infected by heresies. As such, the word heretical was, was used to describe them. Now, heresy is the belief that is different from the accepted belief of the church, the, the beliefs that Christ um, taught us and, and, and is expecting us to live by. 
Pergamos was a city with a religious seat for cults and they worshipped an emperor. Now researchers have said that it was in this same city that Luke the doctor got his medical training. Their god was a serpent and this symbolizes Satan. They had a temple which was called the temple of Zeus and in that temple it had a room that holds the seat of Satan. Now, in this atmosphere of evil, the Christians were encouraged to remain true to Christ and to reveal in their lives, or, or in other words, to live their lives, to show others around them, those that were evil and those that were worshipping idols to show them what true religion was all about. Now, as we look around us and see what is happening in the world, then we realize that we too are surrounded by evil. But we are also expected to live our lives to show those persons who are going by these heretical beliefs that oh you have one life to live and that's it when you die that's it there is no giving of account of any account of how you live right we are surrounded by all of this but let us ensure that we live our lives to show them what true religion is all about now john had ordained antipas as a bishop over these seven churches but antipas as you would have read or heard earlier in the scriptures was martyred in this very city Pergamon because he remained a faithful witness and we can you see that in verse 13 of chapter 2. John reminded this church about the double-edged sword of the Lord and this double-edged sword is the word of God right and we must remember as I as I shared in one of the teaching earlier that the sword either cuts away sins from the churches or from Christian lives and bring us into God's grace or it will cut a church away from God's kingdom. So we ought to be careful that when this double-edged sword comes, it is really coming to, to purge us and to, 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 to cut away the errors of our lives that are displeasing to God whereby we may be able to find grace and that we would live our lives that this sword would not come to cut us out of the kingdom of Almighty God. Now Pergamum had evil influences. So this was a church that was surrounded by evil people but they also had evil influences influences in the very church right and as you as you read you would see for yourself and i encourage you to read it for yourself now first was balaam's influence and this was a false prophet who sold his services to 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 to, to a heathen king and advised him to tempt israel to compromise their faith right by idolatry and immoral living now this is found in numbers 22 verse 7 down and you can read also and it goes right back to chapter 25 of numbers now another teaching or another influence of Balaam is that Balaam was teaching um, the church in, 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 in this regard or they had corrupt teachers then let me put it this way that were teaching and preaching to the believers and leading them into compromising with immorality and we know that immorality has to do with all sort of sexual sins right they were also teaching them 
to compromise their faith so they could be worldly, to live worldly. They were, they were teaching them to accept worldliness as part of their standard. Worldliness is concerned with material values, all that you can get and all you, you can look and what you can achieve rather than your spiritual existence, how your life is connected to God and how much of your life is being influenced by the Holy Spirit of God. Another influence of Balaam was false ideologies. And false ideologies are a system or systems of beliefs and values that are wrong. Right? So all this, all that they were doing were influencing the people of God. This church Pergamum, you know, to, to do these things, and all of this was for the sake of personal advancement and monetary gain. As we look around us, we realize that we are right in that time. I said earlier in, in, in the teachings that each church is a representative of our present day church. And the things that happen in each church are happening in our very churches today. We're in the same age. Now we're in a time when we're seeing and hearing so many persons coming out and saying so many things. So many persons are preaching about prosperity and preaching about, you know, wealth rather than righteousness. Persons are out there and preaching telling people oh sow a seed and you will be blessed rather than telling people to run for their lives rather than telling people to give your lives to god run from sin get sins out of your life and live for god it is more focused on giving and sowing and this prosperity doctrine you know the, the the word of god has been watered down people are afraid to preach sin people are afraid to preach that hell is real and whether or not you believe it hell is real people are afraid to preach that jesus christ is coming back and he's coming back for a church that is prepared. Another influence that was in this church, Pergamum, was also the influence of the Nicolaitans, whose doctrine also was that it was okay to have both feet in the world. In both worlds, rather. So you can have one one foot out there dabbling in sin, and another one you come in the church and you sing and you shout and, and you carry on and, and oh it's okay so in other words they were saying there's no need for this discipline straight jacket christianity where you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't go there and you can't go there oh no nothing is wrong with that you can enjoy sin man go out live it up enjoy enjoy sin so from monday to friday enjoy all the sin that you want to enjoy and then you go to church on the sabbath or from Monday to Sabbath, enjoy all the sin that you can enjoy. Do as you please, and then you go to church on Sunday. But the devil is a liar. This is not how Christ ordained it to ordain us to live. And may we be careful that we are not influenced in this present day by these same teachings. The church of God must never tolerate sin. We must rebuke and denounce every form of sin from every angle whether it comes from the top or from the bottom or from the middle we ought to denounce sin as a church of the living god christians and the church in general must avoid the works of the flesh and we must be led by the spirit of god we must seek to be led by the spirit of god because the bible says as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god the church christians on our own we must listen we must hear and take 
heed to the warnings of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is there and he sees what we're doing and he comes to us and when he warns us and cautions us that what we're doing is wrong, we must listen, we must hear and we must take heed to the warnings of the Holy Spirit. Today, today, the Lord continues to speak the same words. He continues to give the same warnings that he gave to the seven churches of Asia, to us today in our present churches. He commands us to overcome sin right through the word, right through the book of Revelation. You will see all about overcoming, overcoming, overcoming. He warns us to overcome sin and never to tolerate immoral, immortality, immorality. Failure to do this, my friends, will cause us to lose God's presence and we cannot afford to lose the presence of God because if we lose the presence of God, then we're going to, we're going to live like commoners. We're going to do anything and it doesn't matter because there's no convicting presence. The presence of the Holy Spirit has departed so there's no, no, no Holy Spirit to convict us of our sins. Also, we will become enemies of God's kingdom. And that is what the Lord warns this church. If you don't repent, I am going to oppose you. In other words, God going to fight against, against us. The Lord's commendation to Pergamum, we need to take it to it as present day believers. As we caution our own selves and look on our own lives and ensure that we match up to the standards of God so in verse 13 he says to them you remain true I can commend you for that you have remained true you did not renounce your faith even when Antipas your bishop was martyred and you probably saw him being martyred you did not renounce your faith in me you did not turn and say oh no this thing is not real but you remain as my faithful witnesses and that was a good commendation but he charged them later on in verse 14 to 15 he charged them because they were compromising their beliefs as i went over earlier because they had no allowed the nicolaitans to come in and to be telling them that no oh man, you can dabble, you can dabble a little and nothing is wrong. So the Lord charged them because they were compromising their beliefs. He also counseled them in verse 16 to repent. And as you go through these teachings, you will realize that with each church, God would commend, he would charge, he warned. And he would counsel. So he counseled them in verse 16 to repent. Also in verse 16, he reminds them of his, of his punishment or his judgment if they did not repent. He says, I will oppose. And that means that he, opposition means that you are against. And we do not want God to be against us. But he further went on and he says if you remain victorious you will be rewarded there is always a reward for overcomers and Christ promises us that if we keep his words he will reward us so they were rewarded in verse 17 that they would be able that they would receive the hidden manna of spiritual life not only that, but they would be given a, a stone with a new name. And only who received the new name will know that name. There's a song that we, that we always sing in church. We shall have a new name in that land. In that land, that sunny, sunny land. New name, precious name in that sunny land. And this is a promise to us if we would just hold fast to our faith, we will receive a new name. So the lessons that we are learning from this church Pergamon is one, we must remain faithful and true even amidst martyrdom of Christians around the world, Christians that we know and even our own selves. 
we must ensure that we do not allow anyone to entice us to sin. Who is your companion that is important? Who you keep company with? Who are you walking with? The word of God says, talk and walk unless them agree. So we need to be careful and ensure that the persons that we're walking with are not enticing us to sin, but are building us up and encouraging us to carry on and to walk worthy before God. We must also be alert. This is another lesson. We must be alert and cautious. All teachers, all preachers, all teachings, all preachings must be based on the word of God. No teaching, nobody must teach or preach what they think, their ideology, no, or their opinion. It must be based on the word of Almighty God. Another lesson is that if we do not watch over ourselves, but live in sin, we will be opposed by God and we cannot afford that. We also are cautioned that we have ears and we must hear the word of God. And lastly, a day is coming when we will triumph over all that sought to destroy our devotion to Christ. My friends, let us guard up ourselves as we continue to, to approach the end times when we will have to stand up for Jesus Christ. Or we're going to deny him and be damned forever. I encourage you, my friends, and let us ensure that we remain faithful, that regardless of what happens, we make up our minds that we're going to remain faithful to Christ. God bless you as you continue to read the word of God, to study the word of God, to meditate on it, to stay in prayer. And I encourage you, please share this with somebody else. Leave your comments. And my friends, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifi notification bell so that you will know when an upload goes up. And I encourage you, continue to walk with my friends. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Peace and love.